Well, hello there, YouTube. Man, welcome to uh, a beautiful 42 degree 21st of uh, November. Today is Thursday, and uh, little patches of blue trying to snake through. I hear the uh, power gliders out here flying around. I don't see them. I definitely hear them up there. I don't see them. Must be back behind those trees or whatever. Just in a spot I can't see them. That sounds good. You know it's a good morning when, when they're out flying around. And even though 42 is not warm, it's we're getting used to it. That's very comfortable. It's better than the like 30 something we've had here a few mornings. Although the rain kind of warms it up. I think it's supposed to be mostly rainy today. Look at them clouds, man. That's kind of kind of cool looking, huh? Anyway, let's roll to, roll to the Southland. Yo, come on along. 46 degrees, pouring down rain here in Van Chulo. Yeah. Literally like the last, what, three, four miles is yeah. when the rain started. Yeah. It was dry freeway the I whole know, way it here. Was very nice. Yeah. It, we went to Yucky. Yeah, it was very nice beautiful clouds mm -hmm. sun trying to sneak out here and there yeah. never quite came all the way out but well, it was pleasing yeah. the wind wasn't there knocking trying to tip over the car or nothing like that <laughs> like we've had the last few days yeah <clears throat> but anyway mama we've made it to thursday we have that magical day that signals the, the <laughs> end of the week yeah and the weekend of coming mm -hmm. That gummit, have you noticed that Saturday is now, not only is it back to rain, it's like 85 or 95%. I know, it's just going to be yucky. All week it was going, yeah. at least there's Saturday. At least I can probably get a ride on Saturday. Nope, no, it changed. Of course. That but And of course, like I think it's Monday and Tuesday, or maybe it's Tuesday and Wednesday, it's supposed to be nice. Yeah. Colder than heck, but nice. Of course, when you're back to work. Yeah. That's how well, Mama? It's going in there. All right. See what the day has li laid Lined out before us. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Well, have a wonderful day, Mama. You too, honey. Love you. See you. Bye. I love you. Bye bye now. Mm -hmm. Bye. Amazing the size of that thing. That's the one that was up on the rack I was showing. It is a uh, trick to get this thing in and out of the shop back there. So one of the tracks is uh, is damaged, so they're bringing it back in. We got a another set downstairs we're gonna put on it. That's pretty wild. Hope this is coming out okay. I'm using this using my little iPhone 12 mini. I didn't have my uh, 16 with me. That's cool. Well, this is the infamous <laughs> uh, starting issue G310R. You know, somebody stuck to me. Oh, it's my my son Ryan. I hold on. I, I need to answer. He's yeah. I need to answer that. Hold on. <clears throat> I don't know what that boy's up to. It sounds like he's uh, signed up for life insurance and stuff. He's uh, making Kelly and I beneficiaries if something happened to him and Michaela at the same time, just like Kelly and I have. Because he's uh he's moved in his job and things are a whole lot of things have changed, which, which is really cool, very very good for him. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, so sitting right over here is a genuine Uwasa. We're gonna put in this thing because uh, this is the second BMW battery, and you know when we put that one in, it was. It was testing pretty weak, but um, you know, letting it burn on the charger and stuff, 
it appears to be an Excite battery, which is normally really good. So we don't know why. And he's got like three of these things in the in the class, and this is the only one that had the the weird thing. That's the second battery. Well, technically, yeah, the third battery, because this will be the third replacement. The the stock one was was gunny sack so right away that wasn't going to work so we put that one in and i didn't like how it tested and um i mean it just the health wasn't wasn't critical but i mean it should be 100 percent after you charge it up and uh, i think the highest i ever seen was like 60 percent and um yeah that's the best i could do out of it and i was getting it to start all the time now the he the health is just absolutely zero. It just bam, just says the battery's bad right out of the gate. So um, anyway, the I was telling you guys that we can get UASA awesome batteries just at will. Something about this YTX nine BS, which is the equivalent of the uh, Excite that's in there, like unobtainable. It's not a very big battery, you know, to start with, but it's only three hundred ten cc. Whoa. That big bang, 310 cc motor, and um, you know once we put that exhaust cam in there, the uh, which is at the back of it because the engine's running backwards. The exhaust coming out yonder instead of out the front. Because <clears throat> Automotor Honda did that, jeez, way back when. I want to say late 70s or maybe in the 80s. I think it, what was that thing? It's like a twin cylinder two stroke or something they had. It's the craziest thing ever. I don't think it obviously never came to production. You know, just some prototype race bike they had. It was in one of their CRs. But um anyway, cool stuff. Um Yamaha's there still there. Um four fifty motocross bikes are run backwards as well. So it's, it's not it's not common but not totally unheard of by any means. Now the Yamaha's been doing it for so long, it's a. Uh, I would say it's it's not uncommon either. These are fun bikes. They they go well. They're very uh, um, like the GS is very comparable to the uh, um, Himalayan, you know, four ten or four eleven to be exact. They call it a LS four ten, but it's four hundred eleven. It's like the new one. They call it you know four fifty two because that's the actual cc's of it but anyway i put a new battery in that thing it's been a super quiet day down here again today it's just that it's that time of year <laughs> it just does that and then the weather being what it's like although like 15 minutes ago it was glowing sunshine there must have been a hole in the sky that or a hole in the clouds that allowed the sky to sneak through it's beautiful out there and um I don't think it's rained yet today. Might have been a light sprinkle here and there. But uh, they did both, um, or the parts manager, or parts director slash manager. There was a manager. Now they decided they didn't need one, so he's the director and manager. But um, anyway, the uh, his birthday is today. Um, he's a couple of years older, a couple of years older than I am. I've known him, good Lord. Since the York days, I'd go over, you know, getting some kind of a Kawasaki part or whatever, because it was just right down the street from us there in Longview, and I'd uh, run over and grab a part, and there he was behind the counter. And his parents owned this kind of a famous burger joint over on the Kelso side. And, um, you know, it was a, this, I think it was called the Million Dollar Burger or whatever it's called it was a big great big massive hamburger and if i uh, you can finish it you couldn't out there was people i think that finished it i don't know how many how much meat it was we'd go there and get one of them you know as a group of us we go out for riding up in the canyons up there mount binion and and uh hulk makers and stuff like that and racing around on our street bikes on the street like you're not supposed to and um, anyway, we'd stop there, and a lot of the guys were of drinking age, and 
I wasn't at the time. We go in there and buy one of them burgers and just hack it up in a bunch of pieces and you ate it almost like a pizza kind of a thing. But his parents owned and ran that. But uh, he's been around a long time. Then he spent some time down in San Diego for a while and come back up and went to work for uh, the the current, well, it was a dealership. It was called Longview Motorsports. It wasn't with York, who I was with. It actually changed hands, I think, twice before the current owner here bought it out. And uh, like they were talking this morning, he... Uh, he bought it in, in 1995, and he goes, he just came with the store. <laughs> and he's been with me ever since. Yeah, he's been here a long time. He's done done really good for himself. And I'm really smart, so like incredibly smart parts person. It's nuts. He can find something that no one else can find. He's just one of those people you look everywhere. He can't find it. He just walks over there and just picks it right off of the shelf crazy that the amount of parts here because we're a multi-line dealer is it's just staggering the amount of parts but then no matter what you know you don't have the one thing that one guy it was you know easy to get screamed at early on when i was started 1980 because there was only so many hondas you know and a lot of the models were just continuations of years gone by you know and um you know, fast moving boys ran fast moving parts thing, and even the, um, you know, the Honda code manual and the Honda part parts manual part number manual would it would show you what parts were fast moving, and then um, anyway, when the computers started coming about, which were no, they were all, you know, it just came across the printer. There was no uh, user interface with an other and punching in codes. You know, it's crazy. But I'd run fast moving parts and and uh, we'd lower inventory on ones that aren't moving and and I keep you know up on the others. But it was common to have stuff back then. But there was only so many models. You know, we were Honda and Yamaha dealer. And um it was it was easy to do. It was easy to even without the use of computers, you know, before that came about, um it was easy to keep track of what was fast moving parts, you know. But there's so many models and so many changes, and people come in. And Kelly gets them screaming, "Are you guys are worthless? You never have anything in stock." That's just literally the way it is. It's just the way it is. You know, you go to like our Honda car dealer. I'm shocked at what they have in stock. But a lot of those parts, you know, are, are you know maybe still used today on different models, and uh, you know it's just a different world. You don't have, you know, a hundred models a year type of thing. And then they, every year they change that model and the parts are different. It's not quite so volatile in the car world. And a lot of people used to go and getting parts at a car dealer and expect the same kind of thing for the motorcycle. And it's, it's just so, so different. It always has been. But <clears throat> I don't know why I got on that whole tangent. Anyway... I guess that's where I started. Um, we didn't do anything for my birthday on Tuesday. So and we do this every year. Um, when Grant's birthday comes along, we do uh, Grant and myself and then anyone else, because you got different employees that recently had a, a birthday, we'll group it all all in one, one shot. And um, that's kind of cool doing a birthday things it's like i had my birthday again and thank you guys for all the massive um happy birthday things i really appreciate that it's just between facebook and youtube and i have the hardest time keeping keeping track of of everything i still read all the comments but if, if i sit down to start answering them i'm done i just hours go by it seems like and i like i got things to do or i need to be doing or, you know, I'll try to do a couple here at work and, you know, I'm like, whoa, I need to get back to what I was doing. You can just lose yourself in that. And it's really hard to do. And you need to be respectful because you guys are, uh, you know, taking the time to leave a comment. And I absolutely love it. 
So uh, don't don't think your comments go unheard or unread, as it may be. <laughs> I think it's been down a couple more times than since the last time it was here. I guess uh, one of our guys took the um, the three wheel course, and a, a crazy incident happened during it, and I won't go into details because it's probably something I shouldn't be talking about because he's the guy that runs the thing. <laughs> but crazy things happen. The, the worst thing is people that go into something like that, and I'm not just saying for three-wheelers, for motorcycles the same way, you always got them people that think they already know everything and you're not going to teach them nothing. And, um, yeah, apparently it kind of seemed like it was something like that from the little bits I heard about it. You know, never assume. I never assume anything. You know, people will go, well, how do you do this and that? I need to investigate. I'm not going to give you an answer until I know what the answer is. That may take some uh, some digging. I don't know. Depends on what it is. So, I had a guy that came in today. Oh, well, hi, this. Last time it was been. But he put it, got an R9T, uh, that beautiful, um, I think it was like a, it was a green and white. I think it's an off white R nine T scrambler. Uh, I think I took a picture of that thing. Anyway, he purchased that and he put the tachometer kit on there. Jeez, the instructions for that thing. And what's funny, and I and to get into BMW's instructions, I need to last. Um, I got need a scrambler because it seems like not the scrambler, but a pure. And we don't have any on hand. I guess I could go through my build list and find one. But for some reason, he's got the scrambler and R19 scrambler, and there's nothing in the instructions for putting it on. But I think you got to look it up for the Pure, which, whether you know it or not, they're all the same bike. The big difference is the one that has the inverted forks, which is just the R19. And um, there are uh, now there are 12. They're different bikes now. It's kind of the same motor, just advanced electronics and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, the Pure and the Scrambler are essentially the same bike, just different exhaust and just different looks to it. And, um, anyway, I need to get, there's a special four digit code you get, you snag out of the VIN number and you, they'll allow you to see the instructions. But, um, I need to see if I can figure that out. Anyway, I couldn't find the instructions for it. And, um, he's having some, um, brake cable binding, you know, the way it routes, routes through. It shouldn't, it should be absolutely clear. I didn't get to see it. He was here, and I got a text message, and I went up, and uh, the service driver goes, oh, I know you're going to come up. I said, well, you text me. Here I am, you know. And uh, anyway, when he goes, um, I think it's full, yeah, because it breaks on the right. When he goes full lock um, uh, left, or, yeah, left, It'd have to be right because the cable goes across, comes, or the hose goes down and comes down the, the left side of the bike. So it would have to be a, 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 a full turn to the to the left, to, or to the right to to pull it, because that's where it's going to you know use the most cable or hose as it may be. Anyway, I didn't get to see it, but how that thing mounts through there, from what I've been seeing, you can see it should be really smooth. Something's something's weird. I don't know if he's altered. I got he took some pictures of it, and it does. It looks like he's got the stock bars on there. He should not have an issue anyway. It in any way. The cable hose looks like it's mounted in a stock position. I don't know, but uh, the service already goes, dude. It's tight, like frighteningly tight. So I don't know. Maybe you can get the guy to whiz back by here again. Let me take a look at it. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I got some stuff I got to do upstairs. I thought I'd say say a quick hey. I'm waiting for my battery to to finish off. She's getting there. She's a point five. Man, that thing when you pull the the strip off it that seals it up, you want to always hear that. You want to hear that nice vacuum sound because they're. I think they actually call it it's vacuum charged. They have a way of, I don't know how they do it. Uh, I actually read a thing about it before I 
I don't remember enough to even discuss it, but um, it's like vacuum charge, and you want that thing, you want to hear that suction sound when you pull that strip off. I've seen them where it, it, it was in a sealed box, you know, a non Uasa, of course, and um, somehow or another, it looks like you know something fell on it and and ruptured that that uh, that sealing on there. And a lot of times they come up, but ideally you want to hear that that suction sound. That means that battery is in perfect shape. And before the fluid, it's in this bottle that. You know, it comes without the cap on it. You know, insert the bottle on the upside down in there, and uh, it'll drain. Never poke holes in it. If you got one that it even comes with a pin to poke the holes in there, yeah, you just bought a really cheap battery. It ain't gonna last you very long. But uh, the Yosses will. You let them. I let them sit for a half an hour. But as it's filling the the acid up, you can already feel the battery just getting hot as it's activating. It's great. And they come out and just fantastic they'll live a long life and he keeps a, a tender lead on it which is supposed to be a big no-no but can't stop people from doing what they're doing and there's no you know charge port on these things and who knows these things are made in india they may be perfectly fine with it no nope, he's got a good optimate one on there so he's got a good quality one and somebody's been in there since i was in there because he Put the little brass pieces in between there. He might have done that so he can grab it with a jump pack or something. That's probably what he did. That's, you can probably see it better from the other side. Yeah. See the little brass pieces? That's when you need to make clearance if it's a side bolt. The little brass pieces. But with that there, that gives you a better bite for a for like a jump pack or something. Anyway, I'm going to go upstairs and continue what I was heading off to do before I ended up sitting here talking to you guys forever. <laughs> All right. Look at these beautiful skies that just showed up. Brightened everything up out here. It must have sprinkled sometime because it's awfully damp out here. I just don't remember it doing it or didn't see it doing it or hear it doing it. Whatever. <sighs> it feels so fresh out here. Jesus, look at the quads we got out here. Look, and there's more. Side by side, snowmobiles, all kinds of stuff. Those look all ones they probably just built. Getting ready for that season. All the hunters and stuff. That's when we always rode the um, four wheelers is in the wintertime, go to the sand dunes. Sand's nice and tacky and it's great. Well, the dirt bike riding in the summer. That battery is absolutely a goner. It's got decent voltage, but absolutely zero health. And it was, I was telling you guys earlier, it was low. So now we got 100% health, fantastic voltage with the UASA. <laughs> and I think all the, the stuff leading, leading up to this <clears throat> with the decompression release and all that stuff well <laughs> she's taking out the starter and even i mean you know, it clicked when you hit the button before i did put the battery tester on there and battery's completely dead There's no sense in even messing with that but listen listen to the starter motor yeah put an amp meter on it it's like drawing nothing it's just voltage going to air. So the starter motors just burn out. Ah, dang it. Things like that sneak up and get you. But he, I think he's pretty sure he's still under warranty. So yeah, I know he's under warranty because he just actually, they were a, a demo unit and a, he purchased them early this year, I think it was. And uh, so yeah, that's when the warranty starts is from there but anyway that's a that's how we're going to end today with a dead battery ain't that a bummer poor old little 310 but we know we can get that quick now getting a uasa battery for it and that's like pulling teeth so uh anyway here we go look at this 
we're gonna get a nice peaceful dry drive home tonight hopefully it stays that way all the way up north when we get up there sure is nice at the moment Clear drive all the way home, not That's a sprinkle. Nice. There's see stars in the sky. And it's supposed to be pouring down rain right now, I think. Yeah. You'll tell the weather god. But uh, yeah, it's that's oh, very nice. People were being yeah. cordial going down the road, everybody just buying their own thing. Yeah, not trying to No craziness. It was nice. Nice peaceful drive home. Mm-hmm. I like those some rainy ones when you can't see it's just a whitewash out there yeah that's not cool. all the semi trucks out there just kicking off everything it's crazy but um yeah other than that it was a good day today it was uh what's overly productive but i had a good day nice figured out some stuff different things and mama go every time we go up there she's got another list but do you finish a list and they give you another one yes she is, she's the, the finder. Yeah, that's the finder. <laughs> it drives me crazy. I have to find it. Yeah. But anyway, I think on that, we're going to roll in, enjoy our evening, and start yeah. another day tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, though. Yes, Friday. Yeah, we don't mind starting those days. No. <laughs> <laughs> Love our weekends. Yes. Alrighty, well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. And you guys have a wonderful Friday or Saturday. Thank you. All right. We we'll see you in the morning. Yeah, let's do it all again tomorrow. Yep. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.